The word taqwa comes from waqa, waqaya, which is a barrier. Sometimes it's really important to leave words untranslated, especially if they're familiar to Muslims, because when we translate them, we lose things. Okay, so we have this word or this concept, taqwa, and we can translate it as piety and righteousness. Maybe caution might get at something important that's not there in piety and righteousness. Because waqa, waqaya is from which taqwa is derived, has to do with putting a barrier or a boundary up, right? So um, Allah uses this word in the Quran, waqa, is that he, um, he removes them from the punishment of the fire, or he, or, or we say qina, right? We use the, the imperative, we ask Allah in dua to remove us or to obstruct us from the fire. And what's the relationship between that and taqwa? Okay, it has to do with putting a barrier between yourself and what displeases Allah, right? Which, which communicates some sorts of ideas of caution that aren't necessarily there in the word piety or righteousness. Because it's exactly as the Prophet ﷺ said when he talked about um, it's as if somebody is trying to, you know, the, the hadith is that the halal is clear and the haram is clear and between the two are doubtful matters and that whoever avoids the doubtful matters, then they've saved their reputation and their deen. Then he gives the example of a shepherd who's grazing his flock around the king's courtyard or the, the king's like reserve uh, grassland. And he said, you know, if you're going to graze your flock right on the border, it's only a matter of time when they're going to cross the line and cross the boundary and they're going to stumble in and eat from the king's reserve. Uh, and so taqwa is a lot like that. It's about placing a barrier between yourself and that reserve. If you imagine that that reserve, as the Prophet said, is his muharramat, the things that he's prohibited, the things that are inviolable, then it's not enough to just live on the border, right? It's not enough to just toe the line, right? If you are cautious, if you're reverent, and if you are aware, and all of these are used sometimes as translations for taqwa, then you're not even going to leave it to chance, right? You're going to put that buffer zone. You're going to leave yourself some extra space. You're going to create a barrier, an artificial barrier of your own doing, which is really significant because no one's forcing you uh, to exercise that caution. You are committing yourself to exercising that caution yourself. You love Allah so much, you care so much about what Allah thinks that you're going to erect for yourself a barrier or a buffer zone that's going to ensure that you don't fall into haram. That's taqwa.